Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today, video number two of two, double upload day, yes I promised you double upload, you're getting a double upload, if you did not catch my video earlier on, make sure you check it out here, after you are done with this one, it's my predictions for Euro 2020, yes, now, a couple of you mentioned um, in that video that it's not Euro 2020 Eunice, it's Euro 2021, we're in 2021, therefore it's 2021, no. Okay, I know, I know that we're in 2021, I'm not living under a rock, or in a cave, <laughs> but UEFA have kept the name Euro 2020, just because this competition was meant to happen last year, and it was never meant to be done this year, so they're just keeping the same year on it, it's Euro 2020, even though it's 2021. So we've kind of gone backwards, but it is what it is. Anyway, make sure you check that video out, check out my predictions, see who I predict to win it, and then let me know your predictions in the comment section below over on that video as well. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty, I want to let you guys know of a few things, so three things in total. Firstly, this video is brought to you and sponsored by the One Football app. Make sure you hit that link in the description. Uh, follow the instructions on there if you want to be in the running for winning an England official jersey. They're giving away two. You could be in the running to winning one. If you just download the One Football app, hit that link in the description, follow the instructions, and good luck. Make sure you put yourselves in the running for one. Secondly, I want to mention is you can check out the podcast that I was on over on my good friend's channel, Yusuf All TV. Me and Yusuf done a podcast in relation to football and non-football things. So you can also check that out here right now. Make sure you have a look and give Yusuf the support. Sub to his channel. Check out his other podcasts. Um, very, very good character. And I'm sure you guys will enjoy it if you haven't seen it already. Um, and thirdly, I want to let um, everyone know of just condolences. I guess because there is an individual um, who was very active mainly on Twitter and is a YouTuber as well and luckily well I mean thankfully I should say that's the better word his channel got to 10k which was his dream but I'm talking about Kipster if you know Kipster you know if you don't know um, he was someone that went through quite a lot in terms of his health um, had a massive heart condition has been in the hospital for a while and has been you know contacted and supported by many figures and many people and and you know even people in the football world some footballers and, and all sorts giving support he's been through a lot he's a big Man United fan um, but unfortunately we got the news earlier on that he had passed away and um, yeah it's just it's honestly really really sad and I just wanted to mention it and give my condolences, um, you know, as you can see on the screen now, this is exactly what his family put out. As I've said, he had a quite, quite, quite a bad heart condition and was going through a life changing procedure to try and save him properly once and for all. And unfortunately, he couldn't make it. Um, so I just want to say my condolences to his family, his friends and um, everyone that that knew him. Um, R.I.P. Kipster, or R.I.P. Alex, as that was his real name. Um, right, we move on to the nitty gritty. Let's get into it. Starting off with the big news that I'm sure everyone is waiting for, and that's in relation to Erling Haaland. Erling Haaland, now, <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. We've all seen the TikToks and, and the flipping, the, you know, the, the, the lookalike of Erling Haaland. And then there's the Erling Haaland song playing in the background. Every time I mention Haaland's name, I've got that song in my head. It's as simple as that. And if it happens, yeah, if it happens, I'm going to do something. Yeah, I'm going to do something. I'm not going to say what it is, but if it happens and he joins Chelsea... That song might have to be dug out. Anyway, we, we'll get to it when it comes to it. But let's get into the nitty gritty in terms of what's the latest with Erling Haaland. Let's check it out now. This is the latest. So we've got from Simon Phillips, who quotes ESPN sources, saying that they're all in agreement with the majority. That it will take £154 million for Chelsea to land Erling Haaland this summer. And that's the transfer fee alone. He says he was told yesterday Chelsea are looking at what package they can put together. Let's see how this one goes. He then puts his own personal opinion after that saying, personally, in my view, I don't think it would quite take as much as this. It's worth testing the waters and there could be players involved. Uh, I reckon, you know, quoting Tammy Abraham, if I'm honest. Remember, Haaland goes next summer for around £64 million release clause if they don't take a much better deal this summer. And that's the important thing to remember here. Dortmund will sell him this summer. They'd be stupid not to. I mean, yes, they could keep him for another year. And yes, that would benefit them. But in terms of finances, they'd be losing out so much. They can get more than double for him now. As a football club like Dortmund, who are known for selling, 
they're not exactly the a club that just keeps all of their players and goes on to win the treble. That is just not how Dortmund do things. Um, I'm sure they'd like to, but it's just, you know, they have to follow the money. It's as simple as that. And right now, Chelsea are in a fantastic position, a fantastic position in terms of uh, pool, in terms of prestige, champions of Europe. We've got money. It's lush. It's lush. <laughs> <laughs> we are bossing it in terms of pockets. So look, I honestly think that in terms of Erling Haaland, we can test the waters. We can see what buttons we can press in terms of tempting Dortmund. Haaland is definitely open to the move. And I'm sure as hell that if Chelsea do make advances and do make moves, his head would be turned and they would be entertaining the deal. Now, some reservations I know some Chelsea fans have is, oh, it's going to cost a lot and his wages are going to go through the roof. Look, Chelsea are not stupid. Yeah, that's one. Chelsea are not stupid in terms of just offering ridiculous amounts of money in terms of wages and then sacrificing the rest of the squad, you know, and segregating them and making them feel like they're not earning enough. Uh, Chelsea have avoided that situation many times. What I will say is they will come to a good compromise. And if there's anyone that can get a good deal, it's Marina Granovskaya. So in terms of personal terms, in terms of all of that, in terms of wages, I think would come to something very reasonable. I'm sure Haaland himself isn't greedy. I think it's Raiola that's pushing the strings. But the thing with Raiola is this. As long as you give him his commission, you give him that 10 or 20 million that he needs, yeah? <laughs> it's so simple because that's, that's what he does. This is what he does with his agents. and his, Well, not his agents, his, his clients, let's say. He's the agent. His clients, his clientele, right? His players. This is what he does. He puts them in deals and boom, give me my commission. If Marina goes, look, okay, we've got this amount. You can take this, yeah? Shut up and, and let us just talk to the player and we'll sort out something there. He'd do it. Because that's what Mina Raiola does. <laughs> so, you know, there is a case of just giving him what he wants and sorted. Now, in terms of Haaland, yes, I'm sure he'd want a good salary. Um, but when he looks at what he's earning at Dortmund at the moment, compared to what he could be making at Chelsea, compared to the rest of the squad, I'm sure he would settle for something reasonable. He wouldn't be the lad that would come in and go, give me one million a week. Like, no, he just wouldn't. He just wouldn't. So... Yeah, all down to Raiola. I think that's the key here. And in terms of finances, you don't need to worry. I see a lot of, well, not a lot. There's some Chelsea fans that go, oh, no, we shouldn't be spending that much money. Here's the thing. If Chelsea can afford to spend a certain amount of money, X amount of money, then they'll do it. With or without you, they'll do it and they'll be okay. Chelsea are not a club to put themselves in financial difficulty by breaking the bank and leaving themselves with nothing. That's just not how the club functions. If they are going for Erling Haaland, it means they can afford to get Erling Haaland. Whether it's in terms of salary or it's in terms of transfer fee. We're not stupid. So bear that in mind and relax. It's okay. It's okay. We, we can do this. <laughs> but Haaland, look, here's my personal opinion. Later in the summer, half the Euros, we'll see what goes down. But I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling positive. I'm feeling positive. We'll see what happens. Anyway, that's the latest with Erling Haaland. Um, I know there's the little rumour with Hakim Ziyech. But I'm not going to entertain that just yet. Because there's nothing too concrete about it. I know the AC Milan links. But if there's something that comes out that's concrete... I'll let you guys know and we will discuss it. But as far as I'm concerned right now, there's just a more chance of him staying than going. So there's no, re there's not re there's no real uh, you know, need to even entertain it when I just personally think the links are not that strong and right now he's staying at Chelsea. Now in terms of one player that I am shocked, yeah, I'm shocked at this one. I didn't expect this. Antonio Rudiger. Let's check the latest in terms of Rudiger and then we'll analyse it. This is, this is the latest with Rudiger. So... We've got Antonio Rudiger is no closer to agreeing a new contract with Chelsea and is considering leaving as a free agent next summer. And that came from The Athletic. This to back it up, Rudiger is very happy at Chelsea and loves playing under Thomas Tuchel. But he is set to look for a new four-year contract as, as he's wary that it will be his last big deal of his career. This is a weird one. I, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Like, okay, let me get this straight. So Rudiger wants a four-year deal. Is that a bad thing? Because the Athletic have painted this like this is something really bad. Like, I don't understand what's going on here. <laughs> is it because it's Rudiger? Is it because of what happened months ago with the press and Rudiger and certain things that were written by the Athletic, might I add, on Rudiger, which now all of a sudden just looks like... Pfft, 
baloney, as the Americans like to say. I mean, is it because of that they've painted it as this thing where he's just like, yeah, no, he's going to leave Chelsea now because he wants a four-year deal? As far as I'm concerned, and the fact that he's very happy under Thomas Tuchel, and the fact that everyone is pleased with how Rudiger has been playing, give him a four-year deal. Now, if he was 32 looking for a four-year deal, we'd be in the William situation again. And that I'd understand. That I'd be like, okay, yeah, let's not do that. Let's not be stupid, okay? He's 28. In four years, he'll be 32. That will be the time where we'll begin to look at Rüdiger and go, okay, maybe a decline is about to begin. But right now, at 28 years old, playing the way he's played this season, give him a five-year deal if he wants it. I couldn't care less. I want him to stay at Chelsea. The guy is a tank. He's a tank. If he plays under a manager that knows exactly how to use him and wants to use him, wants to play him as a consistent member of the first 11, as Tuchel is doing with Rüdiger, there is absolutely no reason to get rid of Rüdiger. Right now, under Thomas Tuchel, hands down, anyone that wants to contest this, I know all Chelsea fans will agree, but non-Chelsea fans, if you want to contest this, bring it on, I'm ready for an argument. Rüdiger right now, under Thomas Tuchel, one of the best centre-backs in world football. Hands down. Hands down. Anyone that wants to say anything different, you're entitled to that opinion, but I completely disagree. <laughs> Simple as that. Rüdiger has been a monster. A monster under Thomas Tuchel. He wants a four-year deal? Thank you very much, Antonio. Here's the paper. Here's the contract. Here's the pen. Sign on the dotted line. Simple as that. Honestly, there's just no... This is a non-issue for me. For me, this is a non-issue. The Athletic have painted this like there's a problem. I don't understand what the problem is. Antonio Rudiger is no closer to agreeing a new contract. I mean, of course not. He's at the Euros. I, do, you, do you see what I'm getting at here? <laughs> now, we'll see what happens after the Euros. Let the Euros finish, yeah? Let's get on with that tournament. Let's hope England bring it home. <laughs> We're going to have to hope for, on that one, I'm, I'm going to be honest. But, you know, once that happens and the Euros are done, then we can start looking at um, extending or offering new contracts and this, that and the other. Right now, players are occupied. Let them get on with it and we'll talk after the Euros are done. Simple as that. So, yeah, the way that this article has been painted... For me, it's a non-issue. It's an absolute non-issue. And as far as I'm concerned, he wants a four-year deal. He deserves a four-year deal. Simple as that. Let me know what you think, though, in the comment section below. Do you agree with that or do you disagree? Do you want Rudiger to stay for another four years? Let me know. Um, I'd love to hear your opinions on that one. And let me know in relation to Erling Haaland, 154 million. Do you think we can get a better deal? I personally think we can. But do you think we can get a better deal? Let me know in the comment section below. And obviously, you know, leave any condolences that you want to leave for Kipster, a.k.a. Alex. Of course, that's his real name. R.I.P. Kid. Um, one hell of a fight. One hell of a fight. We're talking about Rüdiger. You see that fight that he shows on the pitch under Thomas Tuchel? He turns into an absolute beast. Honestly, no word of a lie. I'm not trying to be cliche or anything, but Alex, you know, Kipster, done the exact same thing in terms of trying to combat his health issues. And such an, such an issue that I know many people would just fall into complete depression or negativity. And he didn't. He always kept positive. He always kept his head up high. You look at his content, his videos, his tweets. He was always, always positive, positive, positive. I mean, one hell of a spirit. One absolute hell of a spirit. And it's such a shame that he's gone this early. But um, RIP to him. Leave your condolences in the comment section below. Head over to his Twitter. Give your condolences to his family. And um, yeah, I'll see all of you tomorrow for another double upload. Yes, you're getting a double upload again. Why? Because you're getting another Chelsea News video. And you're getting the preview to England versus Croatia. We're back to previews. It's been a long time. Well, not that long. The last one I done was the Champions League final. But... Back to match previews. Come on, England. Beat Croatia. <laughs> i got to say, I'm not that confident in terms of England, but I'm just, I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm hoping. I'm praying. Come on, England. It's as simple as that. We're just going to have to hang it out in the balance. But I'll see all of you tomorrow for both of those videos. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you're following me on my social media in the description below, especially my Twitch, as I'm doing watch-alongs for the Euros um, over on Twitch. So make sure you're following me there. And um, yeah, I'll see all of you tomorrow. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell if you are new and like the video if you've enjoyed it i'll see you tomorrow have a good one see you tomorrow take care and peace